Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. I'm so excited to have a special guest here today, a gentleman who is always interesting, always passionate about Canada and Canadian prosperity. And with 10 days left in a Canadian federal election, Maxime Bernier, the leader of the People's Party of Canada, has taken time out of his schedule to join us. Welcome, Maxime. Great to see you. Thank you very much, Scott. I'm very pleased to have this uh, opportunity to be with you. So we have about 20, 25 minutes uh, just to talk to you. Uh, but before we start, I want to make it, you know me, Maxime, um, but for the audience, I am not a professional reporter. I don't do this for a living. I don't make my living interviewing politicians. Uh, I don't even follow politics that closely, <laughs> but rather what I am and what this show is, I'm an expert on leadership, uh, crisis management, change management, things that in Canada and maybe even globally, but certainly in Canada, we just sorely lack in our federal federal leadership. And so I wanted to talk to you today because that's what this show is about. That's what I'm about. And to me, you're just far and away the best leader out of, uh, out of everybody running uh, nationally at this moment. So I wanna focus on, on values today. In particular, I hope to get that out of you. Um, what are your what are your values? What are your PPC values? Because to me, those are the core of what every democratic nation ought to be. And, and they're just under attack more so than they ever have been before. So I hope that we get to talk about that. And I wanna talk about the real Maxime as opposed to the branding of the media and the opposition candidate. You're laughing, so I get that you makes that makes sense to you. So that's yes. my first goal. <laughs> my second goal is is leadership, right? What kind of leader is Maxime? Um, and crisis management leadership, because we this global pandemic is a crisis. There are lots of other things going on, but we just lack leadership at this particular point in time. And of course, as time permits, we're going to get to some of your positions as well. But those are my those are my key agenda items, if that's good with you. Perfect, yes. Maxine, my, my first question for you is really who is Maxine? But I just want to say that I was in a clubhouse room uh, a few days ago, all of whom were huge Maxime and PPC supporters uh, by coincidence. I just tripped into that and they asked me a few questions. And so this was also just a shout out to somebody, a uh, user named The Wall, and he, a huge supporter, um, eloquent, smart fellow. And he wanted you to talk about who is Maxime. And I would add to that, who is the PPC? Give us some background. What gets you up in the, in the morning and keeps you passionate? And as we would say on this show, you know, what is your why? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for asking that question. What I like, you know, I like to do what I'm doing. Uh, as you know, we are doing politics differently. And that's a kind of also of my personality. I like to be with people. I'm a competitive. I like sport. I'm a runner. Uh, I'm running and not every morning this time because of the election, but I try to run at least three to four times a week. And, um, and I'm training right now for a marathon. Uh, and I like to have big goals and, and do my best to achieve it personally. Uh, so building the PPC and when I left the Conservative Party of Canada, uh, you know, the, this party, the Conservative Party was not conservative anymore. And now we have proof of that of every day. But I decided to be in politics after a discussion with Stephen Harper in 2005. Uh, we had a dinner together in a private club in Montreal. At that time, I was a VP of the Montreal Economic Institute. That's a, a, a free market think tank like the Fraser Institute, but in Quebec. And uh, he was looking for some ideas for his campaign and I always like public policies. And I told him at that time, you know, if you want to have support in Quebec, you must respect the constitution. You must uh, have a platform that will lower tax to Quebecers. And it would be good to Quebec for Quebecers, but it would be good also for every Canadian. And we had a good discussion and I was 43 years old. Uh, I had a good uh, career in the financial sector in Montreal. I decided to jump and I wanted to politics because I had a, a strong background also in, in, in uh, business. 
but also in public policies. And so I went there. My goal was to have a smaller government, uh, not interfering in provincial jurisdiction. And I did my best around the cabinet table to have policies that would bring more freedom and less government and less regulation. So I really enjoyed what I did. And uh, it, it's part of me. I, I, I like competition. And sometimes, you know, when you, you nev you, you're not always you winning your debates, I had a couple of uh, uh, debates in, in, uh, with my colleagues at that time around the cabinet table. But at least I like to fight for ideas that I believe. And um, in, in the end of all that, I didn't win the conservative leadership, as you know, with 48% of the, of the votes. But I, was, uh, I want to tell you that night of that election in 2017, when I saw the score uh, 51 49, uh, I was not disappointed. My first uh, sentiment, I, I was, was relieved. I, was. I don't know if that helps, but <laughs> I was very Sorry? disappointed. <laughs> I was disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but for me, uh, that night, that day, that night, not the, day, the days after, but that night, I was relieved. It's a, it's, it's a very bizarre because I knew at that time, mm. looking at the score, I had only on 99 conservative MPs, I had only four of them that supported me. And I had the support of the membership of the conservative, 49 of them supported me. But I knew at that time, winning 51, 49, the margin is to think, and I knew that my colleagues uh, were not in, on my side. So I knew that I, I would have to do some compromise with my ideas to be able to manage, to be able to stay the leader. And I don't want that. I believe that I had the best ideas and I, don't, I, and I didn't want at that time and I don't want today to do any compromise, compromise with my ideas. So that's why I was a little bit relieved. But after that, you know, uh, uh, the conservative was not conservative and I quit. And that was the best decision in my political career to create the PPC. That was a tough election, our first one. But today I think more people understand and all these ideas now, I feel free, I can express myself. And we have a lot, all our candidates are coming because they like the platform. So I didn't want to do any compromise. And it's like a little bit Margaret Thatcher. I really appreciate Margaret Thatcher when she was a, a prime minister of, in UK. And uh, she was a real conservative. And at that time when she was in the opposition, that was not popular, but she spoke about what she believes with passion and conviction, and she was able to succeed and be a prime minister and implement real free market reforms. And after when she quit politics, she did an interview and they were asking them, what, what did you not enjoy so much in politics? What did you didn't like with other politicians? And she said, you know, when you're politicians and having meeting, it's all about compromise try to do some compromise yeah, to please right. everybody. And I didn't like that because when you do a compromise, uh, when you do a consensus, sorry, you try to have consensus with other politicians on different subjects. But when you achieve a consensus, you compromise with your ideas. And I don't want, I believe, and she said, I believe that I have the best ideas and I don't want to do any compromise with my ideas. So, and it's a little bit me also. I don't want to do any compromise. I know that we don't have a lot of support right now for some of our ideas, but I believe they have the best for this country. And the more I will speak about it, the more support we will have. That's why Scott, I'm right. saying that we are doing politics differently because usually a politician will speak about something when they're gonna see in the polls that they have maybe 35, 40% of support of that idea they will take the chance and speak about it to increase that percentage. For us, we, we don't do any polling. We don't, we don't do that. We're doing politics by conviction. And if we have only 10% support, we know that we have the best ideas for the future of this country. And we know that the more we speak, the more support we will have. So that's another way to do politics. And that's why the platform of this election is the same one of the last one and would be the same one in the, after this election. So that's, uh, that's me. I like to be a uh, fight for something. And I believe that I have the best ideas. So I won't do any compromise with that. You like it or not. And that's why I won't pander to your vote and telling you what you want to hear and try to please you to have your vote. 
No, like I, I, I did a press conference uh, in Bose when, we, when I launched my campaign, the, the third day of the campaign, and we had the mainstream media over there. And the mainstream media asked me a question. Mr. Bernier is speaking like that against, uh, the example was against the vaccine passport. You know, uh, it's very popular in your writing. It's very popular in Quebec. Lego is very popular. You, you're not helping your cause to be reelected. I said, you know, I prefer to <laughs> loss with defending my ideas, loss with my principle, than win and not, not telling what I believe in. And so that's what I'm doing. And now when I started that campaign, I was at minus 10% in the poll in both. And now we are tight, me and the conservative over there. And I believe it would be a tight race, but I believe I'm able to win that. In both. In both, but we'll know, we'll know that in 10 days, but uh, it will be tight, it will be tight, but yeah. I won't change to try to please people in both. You know, they asked me a question in both <laughs> at the radio interview, and what will you do, Maxime, for the riding here in both? What we, I said, nothing, nothing special. You know, my platform is good for people in both and it's good for people in other ridings. I won't try to tell you something special. No, uh, the platform is there for every riding in this country, including both. Yeah, yeah, love it. So <clears throat> is it fair to say that if you look at the conservatives in particular, there's just a long history of being conservative during the nomination process and then moving to the center. This entire, uh, entire idea of moving to the center, which I think is what you're talking about, and you're sticking to your principles. And then the balance on that is, do you get a majority sticking to the principles? And you have to make that decision, which you've made in favor of sticking uh, with your principles. And to me, as, as let's say a non-political Canadian, it was interesting that last election, I was like, okay, well, this is, you know, Maxime is, uh, is a political entrepreneur. Let's see how this goes, right? And uh, such uh, courage uh, to get out there and to do that. But he's not going to win, and we'll just see what happens. And this time, um, maybe you win in both. Like, hopefully you do. Uh, but it almost doesn't matter because I think you've changed the dialogue. I think you've changed the dialogue with your values and your principles already. Already. And maybe beyond Canada, right? Because to me... Correct me if I'm wrong. To me, I, I just think this is a single issue election and it's, and it's vaccine segregation. That's what it is. And you didn't have that issue last time. And you're the only one on the right side of that issue uh, right now. As you can see by the crowds, how many people are showing up at your, your speeches around the country well, right now? It's incredible. Yeah, the, the biggest one was in the middle of nowhere in Manitoba. Sorry for my friends in Manitoba. Yeah. But uh, we had we had a more than one more more than one thousand people there, and when I'm doing little places, uh, three thousand or four thousand uh, people in, in a in a municipality in a village, yeah. we are able to have two hundred people, two hundred and fifty. But you're right by saying that the Conservative Party moved to the center. That was at the last election. Now they're moving more to the to the left because we are in the socialist era, and their only goal is to be in government and they will be like the liberals because they have the same policies. And so, yes, uh, uh, my, my pool or my clientele or my pool of, of, of voters, uh, it is not 50% right now, maybe 20%. If I can have half of that 20%, I'll be at 10%, I'll be happy. And next time we'll grow that step exactly. by step. But the most important is to, to, to start that common sense revolution, that freedom revolution in our country. And we just need one voice in Ottawa. I, I believe that we'll be able to elect a couple of candidates. I don't know, we don't do any pollings. It will depend, but it's going well. And we'll have that voice and we'll do that fight and we'll force to have that debate. Like you said, we don't have a real debate uh, in Canada right now. I was listening to the debates of yesterday I was very pleased not to be there. You know, they didn't did debate. Everybody uh, agrees with the same ideas. More, some of them are more socialist, other are a little bit less socialist. But uh, we didn't have a real debate, and that's why we want to bring that new debate uh, with uh, with real freedom ideas in Parliament. I started calling them the Uni Party 
last night. Every one of those people on stage. And listen, I promised you we weren't going to talk negative or about the other people, uh, the, uh, your opponents. But that debate upset me so much last night. I just want to get your view on a couple of things. You know, Trudeau, he started off, he started off with Build Back Better, which he literally plagiarized from Biden, who has an approval level in the 30s uh, today, <laughs> right? He talked about, I counted six times that he mentioned the word Harper. What was that, seven years ago? He's still yeah. running against Harper. And he attacked progressives as if he's not the progressive on the stage. I mean, it's just crazy to me. Talk to me, not about their policies, but how would you evaluate the leadership ability of the people on that stage, or at least of, of, uh, of the liberal and conservative candidate. <laughs> but for me, a leader is somebody that believes in something and, and would do everything to, to be sure that what he believes uh, will, be, will be a policy, will be something that would be real, would be able to achieve that. But these leaders, uh, they're not real leaders because they, they're doing politics based on, on polling and on focus group. So, so they don't have any vision for this country. A leader must have a vision. I'll give you an example. The election of 1988 in Canada, Brian Mulroney was the prime minister. Yes, Brian Mulroney did some mistake, but at that election, he was able to have the biggest majority in the history of this country. He decided this election would be about the free trade agreement with the US. When he started that, in the polls, 60% of the population were against a free That's trade agreement with the US. So all the other political parties, including the liberals, were against. And they said, I know that's, that's important for the future of this country. Let's do that fight. Let's go and battle for that. And it was successful to change the public opinion and win that election with the biggest history in our biggest majority in our history. So that's leadership. And, and so he had an idea, a vision for this country, and he fought for it and was successful. These leaders are doing politics based on polling. They don't have any vision. They will tell you what you want to hear. And I, 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 don't, I don't see them as, as leaders. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, uh, uh, the NDP and the liberals just seemed like children to me. And, and uh, O'Toole just seemed like, like he, doesn't want to, he just doesn't want to do anything so he doesn't get in trouble. He's trying to not take a position at all. But, you know, when he's saying that he will balance the budget in 10 years, and after that, you ask question, how will you do it? And he said, without cuts, you know, it's not serious. It's, he's, exactly. He said the same thing, like exactly. Justin Trudeau <laughs> said uh, 10, five years ago, the budget balance itself. That's what O'Toole was saying. So yeah. they, don't want, they don't want to take a position and maybe, yes, inform the population or educate the population about an issue. No, no, no. They want your support. They will tell you what you want to hear and they will borrow money until we are broke just to be sure to give you what you want and to be elected. Yeah. Um, tell me, <clears throat> excuse me, tell me about Maxime Bernier as a leader and maybe specifically jump into your four core values, which I think drive you as a leader. Yeah, you know, I'm coming from Bose and Bose, it's an uh, half rural, half urban uh, riding south of Quebec City. And they're very entrepreneur over there, the entrepreneurship, a lot of small businesses there, uh, and entre successful entrepreneur. Uh, all my friends uh, that I went in, in school with, they all, they all started their business, they're successful entrepreneurs uh, in both. And the best compliment that I can have, it's the compliment that you just told me in the beginning, you are a kind of an entrepreneur in politics. Uh, and for me, it's a nice compliment. And um, I always, you know, Always, my dad taught me, you know, the, the good conservative principle, uh, fight for what you believe, uh, entrepreneurship, individual freedom, personal responsibility. Don't wait for the government or for anybody to save you. Work hard. And that's what I did. I was in the financial sector and I was VP of a financial institution at the end of my career. But I always fight for what I believe. And that's, that's my... Uh, my my blood that is coming from from that region of Canada that is very entrepreneurship. So and that's why we we created the party based on principles. And usually you don't do that in politics. You do focus group. You do a, you do a convention. 
people are voting on the policies and you put these policies. So we said, no, we had a nice platform, the platform that I was running on during the leadership campaign for the Conservative Party of Canada. And it was popular, 49%. So we use that platform. And with that platform, we create the PPC. And that platform is based on four principles, uh, individual freedom that I believe in, personal responsibility, fairness and respect. And, and now we, with the big fat government that is, do, that is interfering in our day-to-day -day life, people are more and more dependent on the government and with big programs. And I, I want a smaller government. And yes, if you do something bad, you, has to, you have to be responsible for that. Like if you do something good, my dad teach me that. And uh, that's why I, I believe in that. And we create that party based on these principles yeah. and we'll go on until we have uh, the support of more and more people. Excellent. With the two, three minutes we have left, I, again, I think this is a single issue election, which is vaccine. You're going to call it vaccine passports. I call it vaccine segregation. Starting yeah. Monday in BC, I can't even go to dinner with my wife anymore, right? I mean, this is just a, this is just a nationwide travesty you're the only one standing up and fighting against that but i have a question from clubhouse again which i thought was an excellent question you're basing this on freedom uh personal choice correct me if i'm wrong but freedom personal choice i'm against it from a segregation perspective and i'm the one that's vaccine like it's not not like i'm anti-vax i'm completely and i think you you agree with vaccines as well just make a choice oh, yeah. yeah right um yes what do you say to those who are vaccinated who are terrified that the unvaccinated are going to create a situation where this never ends? That was the question from Clubhouse, which I thought was a terrific question. Yeah, first of all, you're right. We're not anti-vaccine. We're not. We're not anti-mass. Freedom of choice. Everybody must be able to decide if they want the vaccine or not. And we are respecting the choice of everybody. So that being said, if you look at the science. Everybody, if you, if you took the vaccine, yes, if you have COVID-19, your symptom, symptoms will be mild, and, uh, and, uh, and, but you can have COVID-19 and you can spread COVID-19. So why doing a segregation when everybody is in the same boat? Vaccinated people and unvaccinated people, everybody can spread the virus. So when they were telling people, take the vaccine for yourself, that's right and they add in their propaganda, take the vaccine for the ones you love, for your family, for your community. No, that's not right. When you, when you decide to take the vaccine, it, it's always to protect yourself. So why, if you have the vaccine and the vaccine is very efficient, and uh, so why being scared about another pe person that didn't take the vaccine? <laughs> You're not at risk. That's the other per person that has a bigger risk than yourself. So, and more and more people understand that uh, that vaccine passport, that segregation uh, will be, uh, it won't end because uh, now the vaccine passport has an, uh, an expiration date. And the expiration date is when the government will tell you, you need a third shot, a fourth one or a fifth one, because we know Justin Trudeau told us that, that the government bought for $60 million the uh, booster shot. So the vaccine passport would be good. And, and Trudeau is telling you, you must have the adequate adequate uh, vaccine. So it's not two, dozen, two, two shots right now, can be three next time or four. So I don't believe that these people decided to take the vaccine for always be uh, at risk to, uh, to, uh, to be segregated because that will happen to everybody. And I don't believe that people who decided to have the vaccine that wants to show a piece of paper to everywhere where they want to go. And for people who decided not to be vaccinated, they may have to show a piece of paper also that will be a negative COVID test or something like that. Yeah. So we yeah. are creating a society with, with uh, segregation, like you said, and that's why that would be, I agree, I agree with you, that is the issue of this election and it can be a kind of a referendum on that situation. And people, if they look at the alternative, the conservative, the liberal, they are for a vaccine passport and more segregation. Correct, correct. Which is why I wanted to have you on because I think even if you're not putting a bunch of MPs in, you've already made a difference on this, which is I think is the only issue that matters. We've taken all your time. 
want to thank you so much for Maxine for uh, Maxine for joining us and uh, thank you for listening to the show and get out there and vote and uh, I'm going to vote for Maxine and his party. Thank you, Scott, and I, I hope I'll be able to be with you just after the election and we can have a look back at the, the election and I appreciate what you're doing. I will uh, follow your channel. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.